Hey everyone, this is Dominic here. I'm with the Raving Hordes Game Club here in Saskatoon. Uh, this is my first battle report. We're going to be bringing you 5,000 point ninth age game, version 1.3. Uh, it's Andre's Ogres versus my vampire accounts. Um, the battle we played was Frontline Clash with Hold the Ground Secondary. Uh, so let's get into it. This is a quick picture of the battlefield. So here on this side we got a hill over here, uh, there's forest to forest, a uh, piece of impassable terrain and another piece of impassable terrain. Uh, he won the roll for sides and as you can see he picked this side and I let him deploy a unit first as well because I wanted to make sure I got proper uh, placement and he decided to plop the entire army because he saw how much chaff I had. So on this side of the table he's got a slave giant. Then he's got another unit right beside that's tribesmen. They've got uh, iron fists, they've got a musician, and a standard. In that unit, they also have a shaman. He's got pyromancy. I can't remember what spells, though. Uh, next over here, we've got a unit of bombardiers, and then we've got a big unit of bruisers. Um, they also have a cham or sorry, a standard and a musician. And they have the uh, Great Con General in there. Uh, can't remember quite what gear he's got, but then he's also got the Con BSB in that unit as well. Uh, right beside that, he's got another unit of bombardiers, and another giant, another unit of tribesmen with musician standard, uh, iron fists, and another shaman of pyromancy in that unit. And then he also has two kin eaters that are ambushing. That's the army. For my side over here, I have a fell wraith on a steed. I've got two bat swarms, a banshee. There's a unit here that's five vampire knights. Uh, also in that unit is my brotherhood vampire count. He's the army general. Uh, I got a unit of ten dire wolves up here. Another unit of ten uh, wraiths. Uh, I've got my corpse cart with a necromancer on it. He's level 2 wizard master evocation. I got 25 zombies, uh, another bat swarm, another unit of 25 zombies. And then beside that, there is the altar of undeath, and then another unit of 25 zombies. And then lastly, over here, there is a bat swarm and another unit of 6 uh, vampire knights. Uh, both units of knights have got the brotherhood upgrade. So, into turn 1. Uh, there isn't too much for ogre movement. He's just kind of measuring things and kind of staying back because he does have a little bit of ranged threat. So there isn't really too much for movement. There's a little bit of shuffling, but beyond that, there isn't really anything too exciting. Um, there's just a picture of some movement. And that's pretty much all he did. Uh, straight into magic here. He uh, rolled a 4 and a 1. The nobody channeled. Uh, magic wasn't very effective first turn. He tried to cast Enveloping Embers on uh, one of the units of zombies, failed the casting roll, and then he tried to cast a 2d6 level Pyrocasted Flow and failed the casting roll as well, so not very effective. Uh, shooting though, he uh, peels five wounds off of this unit of zombies, and then he peeled uh, two more wounds off of this unit of zombies back here. And that was Ogre Khan's turn one. So Vampire Covenant turn one. Uh, we just see some, that's kind of the battlefield here before. Uh, then we got some movements, everything's kind of staying in the range of the general on this side just for marching. And I'm kind of just moving up a little bit here. Uh, I'm waiting to see when those uh, kin eaters are going to come in the table, which side he's going to bring it on, so I can deal with those right away so he doesn't kind of get in my way. Um, so there's some movements just sort of shuffling around on this side as well as on this side just sort of staying back and shuffling around. I didn't want to get charged down the hill with all the combat res and everything else like that. So I was kind of holding back for the first turn. Uh, my magic phase, I managed to get a 3 and a 5 and the Ogre's Channel. I cast the Dead Arise and managed to summon 10 zombies right up there in the center. So a new unit of zombies. Um, I tried to cast uh, Touch of the Reaper and that failed. And then I also cast Rot Within on his Bruiser's unit, and he dispelled that. So that's it for Vampire turn one. Into the Ogre Cons turn two. Uh, 
so he uh, declares a charge with the bruisers against those uh, the newly raised unit of zombies there, but he failed the, the roll. Uh, that was pretty much it for charges. Everything else kind of just continued to shuffle up a little bit. Uh, the far left side with the giant and the bombardiers, or the giant and the uh, tribesmen over here, they're just kind of staying back and holding those knights at bay right now. Uh, besides that, that's pretty much all he did for movement. Uh, one of the cane eaters did come in on this side, uh, so he's decided to threaten this flank a little bit here. Uh, and then we go into magic after that. Uh, so magic, he managed to roll uh, a three and a three, and also channeled. Uh, he cast Enveloping Embers on uh, one of the units of zombies. I failed to dispel by one, so he managed to kill uh, 14 zombies with that. And then he also did a second level Pyrocastic Flow, and then he killed uh, five more zombies with that. He rolled really low, so... Um, but, he did peel off a bunch of zombies over here. Uh, that was pretty much it for the magic phase. Um, yeah, that was one guy left. And then in the shooting, he decided to just blast that guy off the table. As well, then he killed some dogs on this side. And that was it. So into Vampire's turn two. Um, I didn't declare any charges. I decided just to move up to continue to chaff him with that unit of zombies that I raised here. So they're just kind of moving into place a little bit. Um, everything else just kind of moved around. I moved up the knights to be just inside of a decent range. I think I'm like 15 inches away and I think I'm 14 away with the bats or something like that. So fairly decent charge range on uh, swift stride. As well as everything else kind of shuffles around. The altar moves out. Um, he's not really doing much right now. I'm just kind of biding my time for turns to do the damage aura. Up here I chaff the tribesmen with the remaining dogs. Um, let's see over here. Over here, I chaff up the giant with the bats. I tried to chaff up the kin eater with these bats, but as you see in the next turn, I didn't quite do it right. Um, the fell wraith also moved through him. Uh, he's got the beast bane halberd, so I was hoping to do some multiple wounds to him, but I rolled a one, so totally failed. And that's just sort of uh, where everything is at. Uh, in magic phase. I rolled a 2 and a 2, and I also had a channel. I managed to get off the Rot Within on the Bruisers unit in the center, and then I failed casting Mark for Doom. I think I... I can't remember. I think I tried to cast it on the Giant, possibly. Um, shooting, I also managed to scream at the Giant for one wound, so that was kind of nice. Into Ogre's turn 3, the Giant charges the Bats here, and... Like I said, I didn't position these bats quite enough, so his kin eater was able to just wheel around just barely, but uh, managed to get into the rear of the fell wraith there. Um, I was kind of hopeful with that, because I figured, you know, with my three attacks and multiple wounds, I might even be able to kill him or at least survive. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, up here, his great con decides to charge out of the unit into this unit of zombies. And the tribesmen up here just charge the dogs because they're kind of just messing with messing with his plants. Um, into magic, he rolls a six and a two. Uh, both of us decided to channel this time. Um, he goes off with the ring and he causes a hit on the uh, altar of undeath, but I save it, I believe, or he did wound or something. Um, and then he goes and he casts enveloping embers on the knights, and I let that go off, six hits, didn't cause any wounds, didn't get through the armor at all, and then he tried to do a two level pyrocastic flow, and I also dispelled out. Into shooting, he uh, peels a few wounds off of both units of zombies here, uh, that's pretty much it for that. Into combat phase, the great con obviously just wipes out the, uh, the zombies, no problem, and he just reforms a little bit to get a little bit better position there. Uh, the tribesmen wipe out the dogs, no problem, they also just stay there. And up here, hilariously, the giant whiffs, and he puts like one wound on the, the bats, he only 
three stomps for one. I think I even wounded him back for one in this one here, actually. So I ended up sticking around, not even crumbling. Uh, here, unfortunately, I whiffed uh, worse than the giant did. I didn't cause a single hit even, and the uh, kin eater just wipes me out. And he decides just to kind of reform there. He didn't want to overrun. Uh, it probably would have been not a bad idea, but he decides just to stay on the spot and kind of change his direction a little bit. Uh, and that's it for that. We've got into uh, Vampire's turn three. So on this side of the table, my Vampire Knights are going to charge the Tribesmen. These Bats are going to charge the Tribesmen. Uh, these Vampire Knights with the General, I also charged the Bombardiers, and he elected to flee. Bombardiers that were over here, that is. Uh, so he fled from that charge, and then I redirected into these ones. Then we also had these zombies here that decided to charge into the Great Con, just to kind of take away those impact hits. And also, I really was going to be able to hold up this unit because of just positioning. They were going to be stuck and doing absolutely nothing, so it was a big help. Uh, so the zombies made it in. These knights and the general make it in. Uh, over here, the knights make it in, but the bats fail the charge, which isn't the worst thing. Uh, I was kind of hoping that they'd help protect the flank from this uh, from this giant here. That's okay. Uh, yeah, so they failed that charge. Everything else kind of moves up a little bit. Um, the bats over here, they chaffed the uh, kin eater this time successfully. Um, I was a little confused. I didn't have an idea of what I wanted to do with the necromancer on the cart or the wraiths for that matter. They started the turn within march range, so I could still move. And I'd like to get back to that, but I'd also like to get him close enough that I could cast. Uh, if I cast an evocation, then I can get lightning reflexes on these knights. So, doing that though puts me in a really bad position if the uh, kin eater comes in and overruns and wipes these guys out. So I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to do, and then at the end I decided I was just gonna move him up, take it up so he doesn't get a flank charge at the very least, and move up the wraiths maybe to, you know, get my own flank charge if he if he charges me back and maybe I can kill him before I die. Uh, so that's it for the movement. Um, in magic, we got a 6 and a 4, and I also channeled. Uh, I managed to cast the Dead Arise behind that unit of tribesmen that I charged. Uh, I got 18 of them up with the, with the spell. Uh, so if he flees, he's going to be taking a lot of the DTs, failing on the 3. And then I did manage to cast a Evocation of Souls on the unit of bat swarms fighting the giant. So Lightning Reflexes on the Knights. Uh, against the tribesmen there. And then I also tried to cast a... I think I tried to cast... Oh, what was it? Uh, Touch of the Reaper on the Kin Eater. Uh, and I miscast and then I suffered a wound. Uh, but it didn't cause any damage to the Kin Eater, oddly enough. And then I tried to cast the Rot Within and the Bruisers. That was dispelled. And then uh, in the shooting phase I screamed at the giant and it saved uh, no, I, I screamed at the Kin Eater, and it saved the wound. Uh, into combat, the, uh, the knights over here, they peel off a bunch of ogres, as well as I killed the, um, the shaman in this phase as well, I believe. Yeah. Uh, he manages to put one wound back on me, and then he passes his steadfast roll on a seven, and he's sticking around. And the other side over here, the giant still pretty much whiffs and doesn't manage to kill the bat outright. So that's not good for uh, the giant. He's getting tied up there for far too long, which is fantastic for me. Over here, uh, my general has to issue a challenge, and his he didn't have a champion in the unit, so the shaman decided to accept uh, and just got crushed. Uh, killed the killed the shaman. I think I did 11 wounds to the ogres in total. Uh, so I'm up by quite a bit. He can't be steadfast because I've got a rank, he's got a rank. He's going to run, and I'm going to restrain my pursuit. He uh, he goes through <laughs> a bunch more DTs, kill off a couple more ogres, um, and then I reform to face the center of the table over here. Alright, uh, we're going into ogres turn 4. So over here, um, Oh yeah, the combat in the last turn, he killed a bunch, but not a lot. I think he killed, what does it look like, maybe maybe five.
five or five or so. He killed zombies. Kind of did really, really good. Uh, so in his turn, he charges his great or his con BSB into my zombies. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Oh no, he had uh, a charge over here. The kin eater charges, and the uh, giant on the other side of the table also charges the knights. Uh, back here in the remaining moves. These guys failed to rally and they ran off the table. Uh, these bombardiers, they rallied from the fleeing from a charge. Uh, so yeah, th that's it for pretty much movement. Except there, these guys kind of moved up just a little bit and these guys decided to reform to face these knights over here. Um, he's got no m sh magic left because I've killed both of his shamans. Uh, shooting, he shot at the I want to say he shot at the the zombies over here in the shooting phase. Maybe peeled off a few wounds, but that was about it. So into combat, um, he kills off a shitload of zombies in the center here. But at the end of the day, there's two guys left. <laughs> so he's tied up in the center of the field, and now I'm gonna have a chance to either raise guys back or just you know hold them up for another turn with two zombies. It's absolutely hilarious. Um, the giant over here finally finishes off these bats. The kin eater uh, doesn't finish them off, I believe, in this turn. So he's stuck there. Uh, he does a couple wounds, but nothing too serious. Looks like he did three wounds there. Uh, Combat has still got two left. So, yeah, they're sticking around. Uh, over here, I did a bunch of wounds to the ogres, I think. And then he yelled and bawled with the giant. So I lost by two, you know, suffer wounds, but it's not the end of the world. I reformed to face, I uh, get some more attacks against the giant. Well, I figure I've got probably enough over here. I also want to start trying to put some wounds on that giant because he's stubborn. He's going to be sticking around probably regardless. So um, then we go into vampires turn four. So over here, the bats decide to charge the flank of the bombardiers. These zombies decided to try and charge the flank of these uh, bruisers. Uh, they do have the rot within, so they're only weapon skill 2 right now, so it's not the worst. Plus the flank charge, the rank, static combat res, everything like that. Um, kind of adds up. The knights over here also declared a charge against the bombardiers. Really long charge, but I thought, you know what, whatever, I'll go for it. Uh, I did fail this charge, and he shot at me, didn't cause any wounds, so I just kind of moved up just to the edge of the forest was fine by me. The bats made it in, and the zombies failed the charge. Um, yeah, there's the stand and shoot, I believe. And that made it in. They failed. Um, what do we got here? I think we've got into... Uh, I was trying to see what this is. Hmm. Right, uh, yeah, just some more movements here. The banshee moved to the other side of the train here. So giant is looking only at these guys, or he can still see the rear of these guys, but it's really long charge. Um, Frederick decides to kind of abandon his position over there and get away from the can eater, because I think he's going to cut through. These guys spread out so that there's no way that the can eater will be able to just go around the, uh, the wraiths and manage to still get in the front, because he is in the front of the uh, necromancer. Elsewhere, I think that's pretty much it for movements. Uh, yeah, they failed their charge just at the end. Um, magic, I got. I managed to get off some damage here. Uh, I did two wounds, touch of the reaper on the uh, on the giant. Uh, I also managed an evocation on. Oh, I tried to evocate the zombies in the center, fighting the con and the great con, but he dispelled that one. I got off another of the rot within on the bruiser units. They're down to weapon skill one for the rest of the game. And then I tried a marked for doom on the uh, bombardiers over here, and that one failed. Uh, shooting, I did another wound to the giant, so he's he's hurt now. He's up to, I think he's got two wounds left. Um, possibly only one. Can't remember. One or two. Um, then combat against the uh, the great con. They kill the zombies. There's only two left. It's not big of a deal. Um, the bats over here. Uh, 
they uh, they've lost. They died. There are only two rooms left. Um, from the other side of the table, over here, the bats whiffed. He still hit on fives, but he managed to kill me. Um, so they're gone. And I think that was about it. Yeah. So here's. I think that's actually from the shooting phase. Me screaming at him. Yeah, he's got five wounds on him. Um, the bat dies over here. They die. Uh, over here, I managed to cause a couple more wounds to the ogres. Uh, I did one wound to the giant. And when he runs, the giant stays. And I reform again to face him a little bit better. And I think that's pretty much it for my turn. So into ogres, turn five. Uh, so the uh, the giant on this. Oh, sorry, we'll start over here. The the great con charges, the BSB charges, and these bombardiers decide to charge as well. The giant charges over here, and both the bombardiers and the um, bruisers decide to charge the knights that are just on the edge of the forest. Uh, so these guys all make it. These guys both make it. Uh, he actually measured wrong the first time. We had to re-roll for whatever reason. He thought his move was four for some reason. Uh, he's like, no, 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 six. I'm like, oh, I don't know why I forgot that. Whatever. Got it. They made it. So that's not looking too great for me. Uh, and as you see, the giant also made it back here. So th he's got no other units other than the second uh, can eater that still hasn't arrived. It's turn five right now. Um, the bomb or the guys over here, the uh, the tribesmen, they didn't rally and they fled off table this turn as well. Uh, he's got no shooting, no magic, so right into combat over here. Uh, he does good this time. He managed to put some wounds on the knights. I put two on him. I think I still win. These guys have got uh, banner plus this combat banner plus two wounds, so I still I still win. He sticks though. Uh, over here, uh, <laughs> he kills a bunch. I reform just a little bit to to get as many attacks as I can against this giant. He's only got one wound left, so I'm kind of hoping that it, it does a trick. Uh, over here, he manages to kill two knights, but I do beat up on his unit quite a bit. Uh, even though the vampire totally whiffed this turf phase and did like next to no damage, I think he only caused like one wound. He didn't get challenged out because there's no champions in his unit, so I was thinking, good, I'll be able to swing a lot, but just whiffed entirely. Uh, over here, yeah, the. Uh, sure what this is. Um, I'm trying to remember what happened over here. I think the bat was still alive last time because I cast evocation or something. I can't re quite remember, but this guy's just over there and not really knowing what to do at the moment. I think he actually turned him in the movement phase to get him into a little bit better position, but those wraiths are going to have free range on him right away. Um, over here, this unit of zombies is just going to get toasted. Impact hits, attacks, crumbles, they just, they're just gone. Uh, so he does some reforms over here in the center. He changes the bombardiers to face me. Uh, we are five inches away here, so he's not going to get a stand and shoot reaction against that charge. And I'm hopeful for this one. And if I position right, I can go into the rank, the rear of this guy. Uh, and I'm not sure if I can actually kill this guy, but if I roll high for my impact hits, at least I can keep him away from the uh, this side of the table so that there's no rerolls. Because right now, both of the general and the BSB are, are outside of helping anybody. And this is turn five. I mean, he's not going to get a charge off, really, and he's not going to get over there for support. So if I can hold him there, maybe I'll be able to break through that side as well. Uh, over here, in my turn, this is now, I charge the wraiths into the kin eater. Uh, they charge up here, just like I imagined. And. Oh right, there was something else there. I did do the uh, the bubble damage. Uh, started my turn, so as you see, I peeled off an uh, ogre. I think I put a wound or two on the great con. Uh, didn't do anything to the con though. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the picture of the battlefield right now. There's not really too much left in my movement. I also moved Frederick around this part to get out of line of sight of the uh, great con. I think that was also from. Oh, this is this is magic. That's what this wound is from. Uh, so yeah, in my magic phase, 
I rolled. What did I do? I did a touch of the Reaper, maybe, on the BSB, and I managed to wound only. Uh, I got uh, evocation on the knights, uh, and then I put lightning reflexes on the wraiths because I was too far away from everything else. And I also tried to cast something else here, I think. I can't remember what it was. I think I might have done like the Rot Within or something like that, but it got dispelled. Uh, in combat, um, let's see here. We've got these knights, they wiped out their giant and reformed to face the center, as well as they kind of managed to get completely off this hill. Um, I believe in his turn, actually the... Oh no, I think yeah, it was turn six. The, uh, the other... Keen Eater managed to come on the table, but on the side of the hill. So if I was tied up there, he would have been able to see me. But with my reform, I'm off the hill now, so I'm I'm safe uh, for my my turn six. So that's that <laughs> over here. He kills six of them, and I I kind of laugh as I was like, ah, he's gonna, these zombies are dead. They're not worth any points because they were a raised unit. <laughs> and I managed to put the last wound on the uh, on the giant. So that was a pretty hilarious moment with only two attacks. Uh, one hit and one wounded. It was it was great. I rolled a six and then I rolled another six and he's like, ah, you fucking kid. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Um, the wraiths just tear through the uh, the kin eater over here. Reform. There's nothing really much for them to do this this game. They were more just protecting the entire game. They were protecting uh, Frederick, my necromancer here. Uh, up here, I do a bunch of wounds. Um, to the unit again. The vampire still whiffs, uh, which is odd for him. So, I mean, he was hitting on threes, wounding on twos. Uh, just, just didn't, wasn't able to do any damage. Um, they managed. I think he managed to put a little bit of damage onto me, uh, but not really a significant amount. Yeah, he, he does some damage over here, enough to get out of combat. Um, so that's it for that one. Up here, I do believe I, ma I killed the the guys with impact hits and attacks. He didn't do anything damage back. Um, I don't think I killed them outright. I brought them down. They didn't have any ranks, so they fled. Uh, I over or I chased and caught them and right into the back of the BSP. Yeah, so there's some wounds. Uh, yeah, one guy left, and then he fled and right to the back of the BSP. Over here, he's measuring for for ranges and things like that, see if he could maybe get uh, to do anything. Uh, like I said, it was really far away, so it wasn't really able to do much. Uh, in his turn, the bombardiers charged the flank of these um, knights, because they were released from combat last time. And that's pretty much all he's got left. Oh yeah, the kin eater came on turn 6, and it's way back over here somewhere. Uh, so, right into combat. He does some wounds. I do a bunch of wounds back. Finally, the vampire doesn't whiff. Um, over here, I cause a wound with... I think he causes a wound back. Oh yeah, there's the, the picture of the... the uh, uh, kin eater coming on the table. Uh, yeah, so I, di I did another wound. He does a wound to me. Static res. He sticks around and reforms to face me. Uh, over here, like I said, I finally open up and do some damage. He doesn't do any damage back to me after impact hits and el everything else like that. Because these guys are weapon skill 1, so they're hitting on 5s right now. They're not super effective, at, especially after losing... Looks like he lost two more ogres completely. So he's only got 6 attacks hitting on 5s. It wasn't really effective. Um, these guys break and run away from combat. These guys decide they're still going to stick it out, surprisingly. I think they needed like a 3 or something like that, and they, they managed it. So, uh, so they're sticking around. Uh, then we go into ogres turn 6. Um, sorry, I think this is uh, Vampire's turn 6. Yeah, Vampire's turn 6. Uh, so this guy causes damage at the beginning of the turn, and I'm pretty certain it does damage to everybody because it doesn't say it doesn't target uh, units of combat. So <laughs> the D6 strength 6 wipes out the, the BSB, freeing me up, and didn't do, I think it didn't do anything to the to the great con. I he's got the bluffer's helm and all that. He's dished out for damage. Uh, my turn. Um, at this point, I decided I'm just going to move up to contest because the secondary objective is hold the center, and the marker that we moved off for movement is like right there. Uh, and these guys are scoring. Uh, he was kind of egging me on here. 
Um, by this point in the game, I was already crushing quite a bit. I was like, I know that I'm not going to do any damage to him, and I know he's going to do it back, but just for the sake of fun, I decided I'll just charge in. Why not? Uh, so I did, makes it, and then over here, um, they're still duking it out. The rest of the movements, uh, Frederick kind of just shuffled over here for magic purposes. Um, magic, I didn't really have too much that was going to do anything. I cast Evocation on the Knights, got a guy back, and I got the Rot Within on the General. So it's not really going to help too much, but ah, whatever. Um, in combat, the Knights kill these guys, the, uh, the last two Bruisers there. And over here, the uh, I whiff with my impact hits, I don't do anything. And the Banshee on this thing causes another wound to him. <laughs> and he just he swings and he does D3 multiple wounds and crushes the, the altar of undeath. So that's pretty much the end of where it happened there. Uh, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to my battle reports. This is the first one I've ever done. Uh, narrated, that is. So I know things are probably a little bit rusty and... Uh, probably need to be worked on, but uh, any comments would be greatly appreciated. Um, I'll post my list in the comments, uh, as well as I'll try and get my opponent's list posted up as well. Thanks!